we are a small environmental college, and we advocate what we describe as real-time frugal sustainability. Real-time means we do it right here, right now. Frugal means we stress economic efficiency and wisdom. We, um, we are a very poor college. We are a resource-strapped college. We have lower middle class and middle class students who our, our college costs $30,000, which is slightly um, more than half of what you pay. And we give out a fair amount of aid anyway, about 30%. So the average student pays $20,000 to come to Unity. And that's still a lot for a lot of our, for our students. You know, it's, it's, it's a real stress and a real challenge, a real stretch and challenge. Our, our philanthropy is very weak. We're doing everything we can to improve that. But we don't have nearly enough philanthropy to do anything. Our, our endowment is $2.5 million or $3 million. I don't, I don't know what NYU's is, but believe me, that's among the lowest of any college in the country. So part of the challenge for us is to, our faculty are among the lowest paid. Uh, I'm among the lowest paid college presidents, although I'm, I'm paid very well. Um, all the way across the board, this is a college that is very resource strapped. If you looked at our infrastructure, you'd say, oh, what a charming college. But you know, where's the workout? Where, where's the swimming pool? Or where's, where's this or where's that? And so we get students who don't care about that. But we have an excellent faculty. We have an excellent program. So we are truly a no-frills college. And, and when parents come, I say that to them, that you can get as good an education here as you'll get in an elite college at half the price. But you just don't, you know, you don't have the super labs. You don't have any of that kind of thing. And it's a very attractive campus, don't get me wrong. But it's, it's different in that regard. And the reason why I'm telling you all this is not as, to be a poor victim, but essentially to tell you that that's the way most colleges are in America. And if they're not there now, they're going to be soon. And that's not even call, thinking about the state college systems, which are, as, as Michael Crow, the president of Arizona, suggests train wrecks right now. So this, we need to be able to do this at places like Unity. We need to be able to demonstrate that you can move campuses that don't have a lot of resources and don't have a lot of money. I hear other college presidents often say, talk to me about the things that they can't do because they don't have the money. And I say, do you want to compare finances with me? I guarantee you can get this done. So that's what we mean by real-time frugal sustainability. If, if you've got lower middle class and middle class students who come to our campus, uh, th their parents are going to have very different challenges. But more on that later, too. F for us, sustainability is a means to an end. It's, it's important that we all recognize that sustainability is a response to a planetary condition. It's a response to the uh, biodiversity crisis. It's, it's, a, it's a response to species extinction and climate destabilization. It's a response to issues of environmental justice and equity. We do all of these things because there's an end in mind. And we, I, sometimes I think we forget that. We're building enduring relationships with local community, the bioregion, and we're acting as planetary partners. Uh, I think that if that needs to be key to any educational process. Um, Unity strives to live what it teaches by, we want to become a hands-on laboratory for integrating the theory and practice of sustainability into all aspects of campus life. And you'll see what I mean in a moment. Now, hopefully this will, uh, we'll go to the next page. Okay, I think that's right. It is. So, quite simply, if Unity can do it, anybody can. Sustainability is not dependent on money. It's about desire, vision, creativity, and innovation, perseverance, and commitment. Here are the figures. We're in rural central Maine. Um, enrollment 575, 97% of our revenue comes from tuition. That's among the highest of any college in the country. And our small endowment and our annual giving are all very low. So that's the point. If, you can, if we can do it, anybody can. Uh, we, the way we look at it is we're training a new generation of sustainability leaders. Whether they take, we have, I may talk more about our academic programs in a moment, but and, and again, I'm saying this, Unity is my example, it's, it's my case study, but I, I think you could talk about this for lots of different colleges, certainly a lot of small environmental colleges. If you go down to Warren Wilson, if you go over to College of the Atlantic, you go to any of these places, you're going to see similar stories being told. So it's, it's, we're not here to promote Unity, although that's inevitably part of my job. So we have all these experiential sustainability projects that go on every day all the time. Building solar panels, we, organic gardening and composting, campus-wide recycling, Assessing wind turbines, we have a wonderful uh, program where a faculty member, an ecological economist, goes out and helps communities assess whether they can do wind power or not. And we've got our students involved in this. Uh, we do community planning for alternative energy. Um, our students research domestic and foreign energy policies. We measure the efficiency of solar collection. We think about carbon sequestration. We have all these sustainable construction projects. The same guy taught a course where students built a barn. 
And we're going to do more of this. I'll, later, I'll tell you about the new Unity College housing decathlon that we're going to, we're going to organize. Um, I told the sustainability coordinator, who was wonderful when I hired him, there are two things you need to do. You need to make sure that uh, we have a good climate action plan, and you need to mobilize the student body here. I want every student working and doing something related to sustainability. Why? Because A, they'll enjoy it, and B, it's a great workforce for us, and C, it will keep them here, retention. So get it done, and he's doing it. He's, he's amazing. He reports directly to me, and more about that later, too. These nine integrated elements, here they are. This is a Venn diagram. It was the new math in the 60s. It's set theory. I like it. Um, they're Boolean sets, though, in that sense that they're all interpenetrating. There's no hard and fast categories to this uh, taxonomy, this classification scheme I'm offering you. And it, it starts with three basic challenges. Challenge of infrastructure. That's what most colleges are focusing on right now. And they should. It's important. The challenge of learning. How, how, what, how do we get this in the curriculum and the challenge of community? What's the relationship between who we are as a campus and the external community? You can ask all these questions for your university, NYU. Is NYU's sustainability message brought adequately into the community? I'm not saying that because it's not. I don't know. It looks like there are some good things happening from the website. You can look at all of these things from the perspective of, of New York University. Uh, the infrastructure challenge involves three. These are threes divided into threes. Three plus three plus three equals nine, the nine elements. So we're going to look at them in threes, and then we're going to look at them one by one. That's the plan. So the infrastructure challenge is energy, food, and materials. When I first got there, we put a master plan together. And uh, this is so interesting when, you, when you're new in a place. And say, well, we've already done master plans. What do we want to do another one for? I said, well, I'm a musician. I play guitar. If I learn a riff or I learn a song, I'm not going to play it once and say I'm not going to do it again. It might take me 10 times before I feel kind of comfortable with it. Well, the same is true of the master plan. I'm, I'm glad you did one before. You can do it better this time. So that's a lot of how I work with people. They're kind of trying to challenge you. Oh, we can't do this, or we've done it before. What are we doing again for? You just find some way to say, oh, well, OK, that's great. I'm glad you did it before. You do it again. It'll be more fun this time. You're doing it with me. So we're, we're trying to, so we have a master plan, Unity 2020. It's based on sustainability criteria and principles. It's a good master plan. I don't think we can afford it. I'm not sure we can get it done by 2020, but it's something to strive for. We can get some of it done. I won't be there in 2020. I'll be 70 by then. I'm not going to be doing that. But other people are going to need to have a roadmap. The other people are going to need to have something to follow. So it's enduring. There's a sense of legacy about what we're doing. That's why we do it. We're thinking intergenerationally. We're thinking about the long term. We're thinking about the distant past. So you know, I'm talking to you because you're going to do it next. You're going to be 60, and I'm going to be 100 if I'm still alive. You're going to be looking back and saying, how do we get here? Could you imagine the year 2050? Gash. Golly, that's going to be gash. I don't know what that word is, but <laughs> energy. So with energy, we talk about the carbon budget. We talk about energy sources. We talk about conservation efforts. More on that soon. Food, it's food production and consumption. The waste stream, materials. We look at the full cost of raw, raw, uh, raw resources and construction processes. The pictures you're looking at are, are, we do a lot of growing of vegetables. We do much more now than we did three or four years ago. We're going to do more and more and more and more and more. Um, I, I don't know what the local, per, the current percentage is, but um, during, the, during the warmer months, all the vegetables in the cafeteria come from our gardens, and we're getting better at winter. We're, I'm talking with some other college presidents in central Maine about developing consortiums where we could buy together so we can support local businesses. More on that soon, too. Uh, in the middle is where I live. It's the Unity House. We're going to spend a lot of time talking about the Unity House. It's, it's the first platinum lead president's residence in the country that I'm aware of. And on the right is another sign for our community garden. Energy um, starts with the hard questions. How do we continue? To, how do we heat and cool our buildings? How do we move our people and goods from one place to another? And how we power our machines without simultaneously altering the biosphere? That's the core of the question. And we're doing the best we can to solve it. Um, we're trying to respond to the challenge with full cost accounting. We balance short and long-term campus dollars with ecological and climatic ramifications. We just, we're very fortunate that we just got a, a Rocky Mountain Institute fellow uh, as part of our relationship with the Rocky Mountain Institute. That's Amory Lovenshop, and she just appeared on campus. She's fantastic, and she's going to help us figure out how we can do full energy cost accounting on our campus. Um, we're thinking constantly about technical innovations, renewable energy sources. My long-term plan for the college is that different buildings are powered by different en energy sources. We have some solar, we have some wind, we have some um, um, wood pellets. That's actually those three. Geothermal is tough for us because it's so much ledge. Um, 
then uh, rigorous conversion, retrofitting, uh, conservation, retrofitting, uses instructional landmarks, full transparency, all energy users understand the flow of, from source to destination to by byproduct, full life cycle analysis, and then interpretive displays that educate the public about the complexity of energy choices. More on that in a minute as well. But and none of this works if there is an interpretation that goes along with it. Uh, food. Where does your food come from? Very, very important question. Uh, it's great to see the local food movement gaining more prominence. How much energy is used in the production and distribution of food? Which, which policies will uh, support more sustainable food operations? How does the cultivation and domestic history of food we eat reflect ourselves in this place? Uh, these are questions that are key to the curriculum. We have a lot of classes that are asking these questions, both in terms of energy and in terms of food. I want every Unity College student to graduate being able to ask these questions in a rigorous way, and being able to begin to answer them for any community where, he, where they live. Then I'll be satisfied if they've had a good educational experience at Unity. Uh, quite frankly, that to me is more important than, than how many chemical equations they know, because they'll learn the chemical equations in relationship to this stuff. That's why I'm a child of the interdisciplinary 60s. You start with this challenge, you start with the problem, then you figure out what substance and what discipline you need to answer, fully answer that question. Here's how we respond to the challenge. The campus, we see the campus as a food producing edible landscape. We grow food everywhere. Lawns are bisected by garden strips and framed with permaculture shrubbery. Our cafeterias serve more local and organic food and have compelling interpretive exhibits. We had a, a, something really amazing that happened. I was recently in Cambodia and I received an email. I, I couldn't go, unfortunately, because uh, I was over there. But we had a, a, a person in the cafeteria who got um, a local uh, fish, uh, a, grow, a, a local shrimp uh, establishment to come on campus, serve the local shrimp, and do a whole discussion and display about how they, how they you know, catch the fish, how they distribute them, and everything else. This happened without any knowledge on my part. It happened purely because the whole campus is now buying into this vision. Uh, again, that's something I'm going to uh, talk a bit more about in a moment. Classes calculate the energy costs of different methods of food production. The school campus becomes a home for bioregional experiments in food preparation and production. We have one student who, for her class, what she wanted to do was uh, develop wildflower gardens on campus. And she put together the most amazing wildflower garden that you know, every month of the, of the between, really between June and October was filled with really beautiful flowers. It completely changed the campus. And now I want her to do more of them. Every time I see her, I tell her what a great job she did. Do more, do more, do more. This is what we want. That's not expensive. This kind of thing isn't expensive. It's just a matter of having a vision for what you want the whole campus to look like. Think about how you can do that even here. You know, how you can get those sorts of things going. Materials, uh, that's the Unity House, which you'll see more pictures of in a moment. Where do, what do we purchase and where, where do our materials come from? Uh, can, we, can you identify the supply chain? Which materials are most likely to minimize ecological impact? Can we find materials that are recycled, reclaimed, or rethought instead of new? How do we develop common expectations about sustainable materials practice? Now, I know this is a big system, and NYU is doing some amazing things, but do you think those questions were asked with all the new constructions that are going on here? Probably not. No, it starts slowly. It's a lot easier for me to do it in a small system like this one than in a big system like this. But the fact is, the world's changing. I was out at the US Green Building Council conference in, uh, in um, oh, where was it? It was in November in Phoenix, in Arizona. And there were 20,000 people there. And every different vendor was selling some material that was innovative and interesting and new and different and way cheaper than it used to be. The markets are changing on this. The, the industry is changing. Things that we used to use the excuse, well, it's too expensive to get this material. It's not anymore. It's just these are excuses. There are ways that you can do buildings now that are just extraordinary, in innovative, brilliant. You should be involved in that stuff. Um, what we do is we try to have awareness of the full cost of products and use, have very creative use of recycled and reclaimed materials. We try to use less as a way of saving money and resources. And we pursue new kinds of products, insisting on no toxic glues or adhesives, regional resources, and we prioritize recycled materials. That's what we do. So that's a little bit about infrastructure. Every campus will have different opportunities. At a place like Arizona State University, with a lot of solar energy, the challenge is how to cool the buildings. In Unity, Maine, the challenge is how to heat the buildings. Um, this is, these are bioregional applications. Every place is different in terms of what's possible. Um, at NYU, I would imagine rooftop gardens would well, I don't know what you got on your roofs, but that would make a tremendous amount of sense. You see it all of New York City anyway. That's, that's the way to go. Now, what's, we walked, um, Chris took me down to East Village because I hadn't been there in 40 years. And 
We, you know, we passed these really amazing community gardens there. That's just, what, what a change, what a difference that makes on a block if you have things like that. The community challenge. This is not taken as seriously sometimes as it ought to be. And it's governance, investment, and wellness. And once again, I'll tell you about all three of them and then we'll look at them one by one. Governance, all, this, all decision making processes and stakeholders have to be involved in sustainability related decisions. Is every person on campus involved in some aspect of moving a campus towards sustainability? It's the question we have to ask. Is there a clarity of purpose regarding accountability, responsibility, and agency? So one of the things that, I'll, I'll wait till I get to the slide and I'll talk more about it. Investment, all aspects of a college's impact on the finances of the regional community. Every college campus is a regional economic multiplier. Every decision that NYU, every decision that Unity makes, I can tell you, it's very, very poor in Waldo County. And, is anyone here from Maine, by the way? Where are you from? Uh, okay, that's not even Maine, <laughs> right? I mean, I'm just kidding. But you're, yeah, and Portland and South is just a whole different world than once you get up to the rest of it, rest of the state. But good, I'm glad you've got another Mainer here. I'm actually from New Hampshire and New York originally, so and then ultimately we're really what difference it makes. Um, investment is, but, but think, Unity, a place like Unity, any decision that we make to support local farms is going to really add to the prosperity of the local farmers. Any decision that NYU makes about materials procurement is, is going to have a major impact. So we have to see ourselves, colleges have to see themselves as, as regional economic multipliers. Do we support sustainable business practices? What do our endowments look like? All very important questions. So there's a place for you, see, in any of these schemes. If you're, if you're getting an MBA, if you're interested in ecological economics, this is where you belong. Uh, every one of these things are connected. Every one of these are important. Wellness is another one that's just not talked about nearly enough. What's the stress level, general health, and attitude of the organization? Um, does the college promote healthy living, emphasizing everyone's physical and mental well-being? Make wellness a priority, find the time, accept no excuses. So we have all kinds of wellness initiatives on campus. I, I biked 2,500 miles last year. I go out with, with my uh, academic vice president and dean of student life. We go out almost every single day. People see that, staff members who are out of shape see it, and they start doing it too. It's amazing what happens when you role model certain things. It really is absolutely amazing. I didn't do it for that purpose. I did it because I like to get out. I don't see how anyone can sit in an office all day long, quite frankly. I need to get out and do stuff. So the students see me, the 60-year-old guy, still plays basketball with him, he's out. It makes an enormous difference. It absolutely makes an enormous difference. So we have all these other, right now we have a wellness competition going on on campus. We have 100 students involved, that's 20%. We have staff and faculty involved. And you have to weigh in, you, you have to Talk about what you're doing, and it's just great to see. You have to add recipes. You know, you send recipes out on, on the local internet, and, and uh, we do these kinds of things. Every, every semester, we have some other kind of wellness challenge that permeates the entire campus. So we've seen a tremendous reduction. In, it's worked. We've seen a tremendous reduction in obesity. We had one of our signature programs is conservation law enforcement. That's students who want to be game wardens. And we had a problem. It's, it's, it's one of our best programs right now, actually. It's a signature program. Um, which is great because you want these people to understand the natural world. A couple of years ago, we had students who couldn't flunk the fitness exams. That's not true anymore. So, yeah. Okay, so uh, wellness is important. Uh, I believe very, and what's the point, you know, if you're not well? So good governance. How does an organizational structure, culture support and implement sustainability as a way of life? These are the hard questions. What is the relationship between sustainability and participatory governance? How do you use sustainability as a means to motivate unify and inspire an entire campus. So here's how we're trying to respond. You've got to align the mission uh, with a structure of governance that's reflected in the curriculum. It all works together. So uh, the mission of our organization incorporates sustainability in terms of what we talk about. All the board, board members understand this. They don't join the board unless they get that. You don't only have to do this at environmental colleges. Every senior staff member knows it. Everyone has it built into their job description. Our, our uh, housing guy, he now, he's proud that he goes to various other campuses and he's now a consultant. Um, I, I've got, what, one of the things I'm really proud of that we spent a lot of time doing, there are a lot of people on our staff who've never been out of Maine. And we sent them to conferences. We sent two, three cafeteria people to um, uh, farm to uh, cafeteria conferences. And they come back and, you know, first of all, they're out of Maine. And they get to see themselves and, they, and they, they're regenerated, uh, rejuvenated, that's what I want to say. Not regenerated, rejuvenated. And it's, it's wonderful to see what they do. This one guy came back, and we talk hoops a lot. He's a basketball player, and you know, we talk our hoops, and he's a Celtic fan. I'm a Knicks fan. It's tough, rough times for us right now, but 
uh, we, you know, we have our talk, and then he tells me, hey, I, I have this new cuisine. You know, it's going to be more organic food and more ethnic food. And he's very proud of it. He's a guy who never thought about those things before. That's, when I, I, that's what moves me more than anything. When I see staff members like that, I, I've got a guy who, uh, director of facilities and maintenance, used to work at L.L. Bean. He said he was going to retire, and, and then we started doing these sustainable construction projects. He said, I'm here with you as long as you're here, Mitch, because I'm learning so much from doing these kinds of projects. So I wanted to send him out to some conference, and he's going to go now. You know, so it, that's magic. I mean, that's really magic when you see that happening. And you can have, make such a difference with staff. So we built sustainability initiatives into job descriptions and performance evaluations. So as a result, now there are these efforts, these things that happen I don't even know about. It's a small college, too. How can you not know about it? Aren't you aware of what's going on? Well, I'm not. Because there are all these little corners of activities and events that go on that it's taken on a life of its own. So I can leave there, and it's all going to be happening still. So we were having lots of discussions today about, oh, by the, so you set reasonable but firm guidelines. They have to be reasonable. And you set reasonable and measurable goals that move incrementally towards sustainable practice. You just have to keep moving, keep moving. As one of our faculty members says, two steps forward, one step backward. Two steps forward, one step backward. And I keep the pressure on constantly. But I let up when people begin to get a little afraid. That's, that's my leadership challenge. You know, push, push, push. Not good enough yet. Not good enough yet. And then, oh, you're doing great. <laughs> and you know, just do it in a good-natured way. People need to feel rewarded. The talent needs to be rewarded. We were talking a lot today about, uh, does it all come from the top, or does it come from multiple uh, constituencies all doing really cool things? Well, it's both. You know, it's really both. The presidential leadership, senior leadership matters enormously in moving these, these things forward, enormously. Uh, but on the other hand, if, it's, if you're not bringing the whole campus along, that's why we're late on our climate action plan. Our sustainability coordinator said, look, we can do it today, but I want everyone here to believe in it. So I'm going to vet it through every single campus constituency so that it's, it's enduring and it, and it lasts. So.